Here we are then in Klein Woods on a beautiful spring afternoon and the spot where we're standing has quite a lot of interesting historical features all within a fairly small compass. Behind me, underneath all this gravel chippings, you can see a long embankment that stretches through the woods for about a quarter of a mile and it goes down to what used to be the main line. In the opposite direction is the reason for this embankment and that is the commercial colliery which was cut into the hillside um, behind the commercial inn on Gower Road in Killay and it sent its coal out along this along the railway laid on this embankment. Commercial colliery didn't have a very long life. It was started in about 1890 by somebody called Philip Richard and it lasted until 1908 when he went bankrupt and the colliery had to close. He started it, say, in about 1890, but for the first few years it didn't work to any great extent. Um, sometimes a small amount of working, other years nothing at all. But then, in about 1898, 1899, he seems to have become much more enthusiastic and worked it much more intensively, and the workings stretched out for quite a wide, quite a wide way under Killay, under Wimmerfield, and right as far as Dunvant. And at Dunvant, they joined up with the workings of another colliery that Philip Richard owned, the Dunvant Level, which is behind what used to be Dunvant Station. You can't really see any evidence for commercial colliery these days. The mouth of the level, where it went into the hillside, is completely covered over by earthfall. But you can see some very impressive slag heaps and they give you some idea of the amount of work that was carried out during those 10 short years. You can also see uh, this rail in the, in the ditch on the way to the colliery. And in fact, a bit further up, there are more rails if you poke around in the undergrowth. Although I wouldn't really recommend that because the track is very overgrown, fallen trees and no proper paths at all. But it is there. What you've also got there is a very badly built wall of bricks and stones which I think was built to hold back the spoil heap so that it didn't fall over onto the railway line. And uh, on those bricks you can see the letters PR for Philip Richard. Um, the bricks, I don't think the bricks were made here because there wasn't a brickworks associated with commercial. I think more likely they were made at his Dunvant colliery where Philip Richard definitely did have a brickworks. I'm still standing on the railway embankment near the entrance to Commercial Colliery, uh, but beside me is this rather enigmatic structure, which I think must be the way house for the colliery. Uh, behind us is the embankment leading down to the railway, and in the opposite direction is the colliery, so it makes sense that somewhere you've got to weigh the coal before you send it out to the market. And this is the obvious position for a weigh house. I don't really understand how it works, but um, I think behind me there would have been the weighing platform and the wagons would have gone onto the platform to be weighed. In that structure there, the weight would have been shown and of course recorded and made available for, for the records. There was obviously a structure with a roof to it because if you look round in the undergrowth there, among all the fallen leaves, you can find bits of roofing tile, um, which obviously just left there when the building was demolished. But apart from that, it's impossible to say any more than that. The maps show that there was a building here, but they don't mark what its purpose was. You can walk along this road any number of times but without realising that just below you, on the left there, there is the remains of a World War II pillbox. There's the entrance, now very much filled in with rubbish and dead leaves and stones, which takes you down, which would have taken you down into the pillbox. And when you're down there, there are three different apertures for riflemen, which gives you more or less 180 degrees of cover. And this pillbox was all part of what was called the Gower Defence Line. And all up and down the Klein Valley, you'll find a number of pillboxes and similar defences. 
Now, looking at the environment over there now, you may well wonder, well, what point was there in having a pillbox here? There's nothing there but trees and this great pile of um, the rubbish heap. Well, of course, in 1940, the trees weren't there and the rubbish heap wasn't there. The rubbish heap had only just started right down at the other end of the valley. And in 1940, the valley floor was completely open and it was the site of a racetrack, the Klein Valley Racetrack, which is now completely covered by the, by the rubbish tip. It wasn't a big thing. It wasn't anything like Ascot or Epsom or anything like that. They didn't have regular meetings, but every now and then, from about the 1860s right up to the 1920s, there would be a meeting held. Mainly, I think, the local farmers, local landowners. I don't think there were ever any really famous jockeys or anything like that. But it, uh, it certainly was popular. And uh, on occasion, I think there were as many as 8,000 people attending. And the, um, the meetings used to be advertised in the press. And the reporters would come and describe them in detail. And the Mumbles Railway would put on special trains because in those days there was a branch of the Mumbles Railway coming right up to within a quarter of a mile of this point. And so you would have special trains with 8,000 or so um, eager punters coming for that afternoon's entertainment up in the racetrack. 